Hi everyone, it's Eva here with a new tutorial that includes my top 10 landscaping tips and tricks. Stick around for my two personal favorite tricks at the end. Before you start, make sure you have the following cheats enabled. So first up are some general landscaping tips. Number one, your main friend in landscaping will be the alt key. Most of the time when I do landscaping, I hold down the alt key constantly. And to be honest, sometimes I even place my phone on my keyboard so I don't get finger cramps. <laughs> So with Alt, you can place plants much more organically than when they're put from tile to tile. Especially with move objects on, like I mentioned before, you'll be able to stack multiple plants in one spot, which creates a lovely natural look. Number two, size some of those plants up or down because not all plants will be the same size in real life either. Number three, to prevent the objects from all looking the same from every angle, rotate them either with the comma or full stop key or simply by dragging the mouse around once you've placed the item. Number four, match the landscaping of the surrounding neighborhood. This is a huge tip and you'll see why. As an example for this, we'll be using this converted lighthouse I built a while back. It is located on the big island in Windenburg and here the landscaping is vastly different to the other neighborhoods of this world. It all looks a lot more barren and dry compared to the romantic flowers of Winslow, for example. Now, when you're looking for plants to use for landscaping, I cannot stress more to not use the normal plants in build mode. And I'll show you why. Like I said, this is set in Windenburg. So let's have a look at all the plants in build mode that we get with Get Together. Yep, no trees, three bushes, no flowers and no rocks. But don't despair because debug is once again our lifesaver here. If you've typed in the cheats I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you will be able to access the debug catalog by typing debug in search, clicking on any of the menus and then filtering it to the pack of the world that you're building in. In my case, that's get together. So then you scroll down and here you have a massive choice of plants from trees to bushes, shrubbery, flowers and even rocks. And now you can look around the neighborhood and choose the plants that you see reflected around you and then the lot will blend in perfectly. Just to showcase this, let me put the same lot in Willow Creek. It looks odd, doesn't it? <laughs> Number five. Use terrain paint underneath the plants to create the look of dirt. In reality, no plant just grows out of the grass and it's usually a bit darker underneath it. I recommend using a light opacity for this so the contrast between the grass and the dirt isn't too shocking and unnatural. Last but not least, the sixth general tip. Avoid symmetry unless you specifically want it. And by that I mean just avoid placing plants in perfect symmetry because it's very unrealistic and rarely ever the case in real life that plants always grow in the same order, if you get me. In some situations, like when you're building a castle or a palace, symmetry is often needed to complete like the look of it, but I would try and refrain from using it too much in casual builds. Next up are my tips and tricks for landscaping on raised or lowered terrain. So here's tip number seven. Do the terrain modifications first before you place any landscaping objects because they will move according to the terrain changes that you make. So for example, if I change this hill, the plants as well as the terrain will be lowered, which means you'll have to raise all the plants again manually, which is a lot of work. Also, here's a really quick overview of what the terrain tools do. So raised terrain and lower terrain are quite self-explanatory, but basically you can just use it to create a bit more dynamic so the lot isn't fully flat. The smooth terrain tool simply makes the terrain look more natural. I recommend using this with high softness and low speed because this tool will quickly go from zero to 100 and 100 to zero. <laughs> Flattened terrain lets you choose a point of terrain that you want to apply to a bigger area. For that, you just put this little square in the middle on the line of the height that you want, and it will use this as a reference point and then apply it to the rest of the terrain.
flattened to height is pretty much the same, but with a different mechanism. You have the square here, adjust the height on the side, on this slider, and then you can just create the terrain on this height. And of course, flatten lot just flattens the entire lot. Now, tip number eight. Do landscaping at the end of your build, at least that's how I do it. Landscaping is a very time consuming task, which is why it is always frustrating when you have to delete landscaping because you change parts of the house and the landscaping doesn't fit anymore. And here is the first of my two favorite tricks, trick number nine, namely the floor tile trick. And I'll show you how to do it on my rustic wedding build because it's littered with plants on raised terrain. So when building on raised terrain, for example, it's really hard to place plants because often they just float and like look out of place. So to avoid that, I just place some floor tiles on the height where you want to put the plants and that way it becomes flat. You can put your objects down in piece now and then when you remove the floor tiles, they all blend in with the terrain. Sometimes you have to adjust some of the plans because they will look odd or too high or too low. So yeah, just go back and then raise or lower the plants manually and then you can delete the floor again, test it a couple times and when you're satisfied it should all look super natural and realistic. And finally it's trick number 10, the room trick. If you have a lot of area to cover in landscaping, which I did for this build, I recommend doing the terrain and landscaping on a specific area and then creating a room with it. So you just add a floor and add walls around it so all the plants are included and then you just save this to the gallery. And once you have it saved you can just place it on any terrain, on any height of terrain. Um, I would vary with directions sometimes, so they're not all like super symmetrical, like I mentioned before. Um, and then when you delete the walls and the floor, it'll all blend in naturally with the terrain. It's a huge time saver, I can promise. I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks for landscaping in The Sims 4, especially on this tricky terrain. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!